manufacturing today is about more than just making things. Whether it's aspirin or aircraft carriers, band-aids or bridges, all manufactured goods are imbued with data. Now that data represents a high value information stream that runs parallel to the entire production process, from raw materials receiving to performance monitoring in the customer's hands. Now turning that information into actionable insight is the key to productive and profitable manufacturing. And in industries where products are safety critical and are highly regulated like medical devices, there's more at stake than just money. I spoke with four experts about how advanced data management drives innovation in the medical device industry. Take a look. Kim, the medical device industry, the medical industry in general, is fundamentally different than other forms of engineering. I come from the automotive industry where the product is safety critical only if the consumer misuses the product. If they use it as intended, of course, it's intrinsically safe. But with medical devices and medical technology in general, you've got to worry about safety from a broader perspective. How is it different engineering in the medical industries compared to sort of other forms of engineering? Thanks, Jim. That's a great question. You know, so, you know, medical devices, you know, put, are used to save people, to help people get healthy and stuff like that. And they're intrinsically more dangerous because, you know, your surgeon can still be using it perfectly the way it was intended, but it can still cause harm to the patient. So you have to do, you know, extensive studies, not only on verifying that the project is designed to what your requirements are, but also that it's designed to meet what, you know, the physicians need in the market, especially your class three devices and stuff. So there's a lot more testing that needs to be done. There's a lot more documentation in along the way, and there's a lot more risk management that has to occur in terms of, you know, how could the body fail in the process of using that, that particular device? Um, you know, some of it is just natural and, you know, it's the way it's going to be, but you want to minimize the impact of using that device on a human. Yeah. Uh, Chris, you know, in, in we think of conventioning ideation in the engineering space, you know, as I know it, as, as many of our viewers know it, um, you come up with an idea or a concept or your customer comes up with an idea and a concept and, and picks the phone up and says, uh, I got this idea, I want to make this thing. And depending on, on your level of involvement with the customer, either they have a fully developed concept or maybe they hand you a rendering or, or a sketch and you, you run with it from there, or they may not be that far along. And they may simply have a sketch in the back of a beer coaster and basically say, you know, I, I need help pushing this into a manufacturable design. How does it work with your customer base? Do they, do they show up ready, ready for action or do they, they need help? They, they all need help. And with, even in all those cases that you recommended, I mean, the first thing we're going to look through is what the input requirements are. And a lot of times, even if they have a fully, what they think is a fully fleshed out prototype, usually they haven't really thought through the requirements where, as he mentioned, you know, it, there's uh, risk management is a very important early stage. And so we're thinking we're going to be looking at each of those line items to figure out how are we going to test each one of these line items that are in the requirements. And most of our customers uh, haven't thought that part of the process. That it's not it's, the requirement has a lot, a lot of life to it because uh, we have to take it all the way through testing, um, testing that will um, then get submitted to the FDA. Andrew, from uh, from a data management perspective, it uh, some industries operate with um, a lot of subcontractors. Some use our RFP systems. Some have to integrate basically digital systems right from the very beginning, almost from that ideation stage. And it's it's a very a much more formal process. How formal are your processes in in this industry compared to some others at this point? Does the paper train begin right from the from the very first phone call? Really attracts a very high level of engineer. We have. They're experienced engineers, and they are all very good at what they do. The challenge for us, um, when you know we started an effort about two years ago, um, to bring Fatherhood and kind of codify how we do engineering and generate. Um, we had, you know, as as Chris had mentioned, we have, you know, we have product requirements, and those are very important to get that down up front to make sure that we we set up that contract with the customer of this is what you're asking us to do, and this is what we will deliver. Um, but really from that, um, it became important that um, as you know, the, the engineering team is at the beginning of that process where we are developing the designs, we're doing the documentation, um, but then we have to move that forward through, um, the, through the, the new product production team, through the manufacturing team, and hopefully as a product that you know, we can produce for our customer. Um, and so it became really important that we put some structure around how we actually capture that data. Um, and we found SolidWorks to be a great tool to, um, you know, but this is the interface that these years are very used to using. 
So if we can have them get all that information out from their heads into the SolidWorks tool, we can use that as the front end to drive the rest, to drive most of the rest of the process. George, uh, it's uh, what Andrew described is something which I've heard many engineering professionals say in many industries, which is that the, the key leap of getting the idea out of an engineer's head and getting it into a process which is formal enough that it could be controlled, but not so formal basically that it handcuffs the ideation process. Is, is that consistent with what you've seen from other industries? Oh, for sure. And and uh, a lot of my questions are the, the engineer, the designer knows what they want to do in their head. They just may, maybe they don't know how to do it in SOLIDWORKS. And so that's where I'll step in and I'll say, um, okay, let's let's try a, a lofted surface, that sort of thing. And um, so in, in some ways I, I help them learn the tool, but uh, I, I, I let them use their creativity to, to develop, you know, develop the product that they need.